Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But right now, oh, it looks a little different. Hmm, I totally didn't use Khan's commands to help take out, uh, whatever nation was here, especially Tom's. Totally didn't, but now, our territorial expansion to pass by the savage lands of Russia is well underway, and in the territories that we can conquer, it's a sacred duty to bring order to these unlawful lands by integrating the culture into our vision of the modern society, where ponies and humans can live together in harmony. With it, eternal peace in the lands of Russia will be achieved. We'll lose some crystals, but the state will be converted to the culture of harmony, and it will be not come course, which would be great. So yeah, I apologize. Um, I just, I basically had to use cons commands. Um, do I want to do that immediately? Remove state fishing fleet? We have some comms to go through as well. And repurpose Soviet infrastructure. Uh, so first, let's do all this stuff first, since now we actually have room to expand. Now that we've uni unified totally fairly with these guys over here. So, yeah. Um, anything else we really want over here? So, construction. Uh, expand the power grid. Ah, do it all. Because we can afford that right now. Um, in the meantime, we did have some more stuff from, I think, Hark, maybe? I don't think it was Hark. I know it was definitely... Greymane. Also, apparently, from one of the comments in the last video... Uh, apparently, the devs have tried to do some voice acting, which I don't mind playing for at least a little bit, but, uh... I'm gonna check it out just a little bit. Let's see. What's a, what's a short one? Because we have to probably mute the audio as well. So, let's see. Uh, shorty? No. Well, we can listen to it as I figure out whether we want to do stuff or not. So, like, there you go. But, <clears throat> England beats up Wales, or Scotland. Pretty normal. Uh, Sport weapons, uh, pretending. Even though I did do the focus over here, which I didn't read about last time, I think. Second Pacific Fleet, so if you remember this one again, please go ahead. But we'll talk about the Grand Military Academy of Mogadon, too. Pretending. Oh, that's crazy. It's majestic in a way. You can say that twice. All the angles in the black steel, and this thing should be undetectable by radar. Yeah, but just have one question. What's a don't? What do you mean? I was just going to ask what this blue bird. Don't bother. Every time someone asks one of the engineers about it, they start speaking in rhyme, something about shooting stars and wishes. Wait, what? What is that? Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, but we just accept it. These are our best, and if they want our cutting-edge self-aircraft to have a bipedal blue bird on it, I can't stop them. Are they trying to feed it? Just look away, Corporal. Huh. Look away before the singing starts. Huh. That's funny, Mordecai. Right? Right? The Grand uh, Military Academy of Magadan. We've learned a lot about the stratagems of an army composed of both ponies and humans. What we need now are people to utilize this knowledge and when it's an edge in the battle of the minds of the war room. Thus, Comrade Bakharin has commissioned the foundation of the Grand Military Academy of Magadan, but why in Magadan? Oh, we are not selfish, and the things that we have learned from may become useful for newfound allies. This also presents opportunities for us to learn more from the experts themselves, as Magadan is a big port city. It gives us ease of access for foreign strategists to come and observe. So, that'd be good. Of course, it is the year 1969. 14 minutes to launch. Bakarin sat happily atop the platform, looking out across the crowd. All these humans had come out to see something marvelous, the first exhibition of the military's new Pekasai shock troop units. Five minutes till launch. The commissar called to Bakarin, and the two exchanged a salute. Looking at the <clears throat> starting line, Bakarin saw the, the Pekasai line up. Seventeen of them, and each of the fastest from the unit, were ready to prove themselves. <clears throat> Not ten, nine, eight. 
The coma started coming down and Bakaran watched with joy start. The Bekasai began to race around the track. Flying at speeds no human could run, and as the race went on, it was clear there were two main contenders of pale stallion with a yellow mane and a mare, with a blue fur and goggles. As the two of them raced neck and neck, Bakaran caught the eye of the stallion and saw something special, raw and unadulterated determination. Riding right the bend before the final stretch, Bakaran heard him from bellow from the bottom of his chest. Poikayal. Pokahali. At once a flash of light emanated from the stallion, and a trail behind him like the trail behind a rocket, a ring of pure rainbow exploded from as if, as his speed reached over never before seen heights. The crowd was stunned, it was a scene straight out of Equestrium. Out of the stallion finish, it was swarmed by reporters and fans, but Bakaran pushed through them all and approached the young racer, and what is your name, young man? Mine? Yuri Gagarin, sir. Huh. No crap. Wow. So Pegasi Divisions, 12 combo width? Not terrible. Not bad. Now, they're still rapidly trying to improve poverty, so yeah. Uh, we're there too. Mass mechanization. Um, industrial expertise. Convert industrial centers, which is one we could have done, but the, the, in the end, it gives us more debt and inflation. That's not cool. So, I want to finish up the focus first before we get, keep going on, so. And getting more cords is always a good thing too. And we've got plenty of political power at this point. You release a plus? Yeah, I just don't understand what we're supposed to do there. I mean, obviously, before, I wish, I was thinking about this earlier. <clears throat> I kind of wish there was like a button saying uh, mobilize. So like when you make a unit, you only make like a third of its strength maybe. And so when you actually do go to war, especially offensive or defensive war, you just hit mobilize. And it would just autofill your divisions. I don't know. Maybe that wouldn't be a good gameplay thing, but I don't know, something else. The way that it currently is, just because it's sometimes difficult to use. 7.53, huh? Alright, not bad. Convert industrial centers, we've got to wait a little longer. Because we want to get these focuses done. So after that one, is that it? Apparently, yeah, this is in the shape of a heart. I didn't realize that. That was definitely one of the comments, though. Um, <clears throat> someone says the Minutemen need your help. Can you send the save? Says somebody else. Oh. The very mod model of a modern major general. Look at this. That's really cool, actually. Heinrich. They had no fingers. How could they hold a gun with no fingers? That's all General James Bryan thought about as he sat among American diplomatic and military officials. All of them were standing on a stage erected in front of the so-called Grand Military Academy of Magadan. All of them had been asked to deliver a short speech before the symbol crowd of a long, prosperous history of Russian-American cooperation. All of them looked out over a sea of four-foot-tall, technicolor horses carrying rifles. As a State Department official droned on about friendship, Brian moved his head a few inches to stare directly at the closest one on stage. He managed a second of careful study of the horse before the creature saw him staring. He quickly looked away. Of course, this event was important. Of course, the relations with the new resurgent Russia meant great things for the U.S. as it fought against fascism. It was important to be fully present in an event American negotiators had worked so hard to orchestrate. But the guns, you can stop thinking about the gosh darn guns. Did they just stick glue like to their hooves? Did they pull the effing triggers? You see them orchestrate a 21 gun salute and not a single one to pull a trigger. How is that possible? Surely some idiot in the Pentagon had to answer. The man at the podium returned to his seat. The general continued thinking, his confusion deepening as an uncomfortable sound spread across the gathering. Finally, after an uncomfortable moment, an assistant leaned down and tapped him on the shoulder. It's your turn to speak, sir. I don't even want to think about how they can fly a plane. The second All Points Congress. The first All Points Congress was held in the wastes of the Siberian Far East. It's attended some of the earliest adherents to harmonic communism, who gathered to chart the original course of the harmonious union and lay its foundations, needless to say. Many things have changed since then. Our state has become far and stretched across many new places and invited many new people under the wing of harmony. And so there are many more kinds of people who that make up our harmonious union. As a result, the delegates must attend the, the second All Points Congress, which must be different to match. A Congress is only an effective event if it is representative of the people united under harmony, so it make sure that the simple people fit just right. Project Phoenix. Alas, the reality of our situation demands even more harsh measures than the establishment of an armed force and its deployment against the disordered enemy forces of Russia. It's even more important in light of our need to free Muscovy and the rest of the Western lands to show them uh, the glory of harmony. So then, like the mighty Phoenix, harmonious Russia shall retake its place on the world stage in order to promote the ways of harmony to the people. Born from the ashes of defeat, Russia shall, shall, shall lay claim to the inheritance of all great powers, the power of the atom. Yes, please. And we'll do have a cup of coffee here. If you want to buy End of Wonders, please go right ahead. Thank you. Not bad. Still looking pretty good. Another comment was, is it just me or is the new version of TNO lacking content of the old mod in Burgundy? And someone said yes. They took out the global plans. Cool. 
A group jet cast? Very nice. A few early helicopters. <coughs> Let's second all ponies Congress. The second Congress, Novus Abyss was quiet before dawn. Standing on the balcony outside his office, Nikolai Bakharin could see many of the city's fluttering pink banners. Small teams of human and pony street cleaners shuffled through the snow choked streets to ready them for the proceedings of the second all Ponies Congress. I was sorry to believe he'd come this far. How many years ago had he been cold and alone in the Siberian wastes? How many speeches had it taken him to explain his vision of harmony and build into a movement of a few dozen to his entire duration? Though the work had often been difficult and painful, he had never given up on his ideals. He never betrayed his friends or let him down. Well, most of them, anyways. A cold wind blew over the balcony, and Bakarin gave a slight shiver. He could see the first few rays of the sun peeking over the horizon, and lights turning on all over the city soon. Party officials would be making their way towards the Congress's hall. Hundreds of delegates, representing every shape, size, and species, would gather to discuss ways to move Russia forward to preserve their revolutionary ideals for the fights to come. It would be hard work. Bakarin turned away from the city and strode into his office, shutting the door behind him as he did. There was one thing he needed to do before he could focus on the Congress and the uniting people in Pony alike. Animated by the horn on his head, a pen and a piece of parchment. Parchment floated through the air, and careful, deliberate motions began to write. It's time to tie up loose ends. Moving westwards. Whoa. Stage GDP growth factor. Oh my goodness. With Central Siberia now in her hands, since that sticks out like a sore thumb is how much better developed it is. The industrialization in places like Nova Siberia's far outpaces anything in our far eastern territories, be that of the result of this development heavy Central Siberian plan or the natural climate not being to our advantage, and sticking to the waste just isn't an economic idea. It's about time we moved all of our important political apparatus to Central Siberia and left our old capital for Kutz behind for a greater city, and Nova Siberia will just do fine in that role. The letter, Elena. When we first met in Amelon, <clears throat> you asked me to explain my theory on harmony. It is this. What separates us from the beasts of this world is the capacity to love. It's what enables individuals to look beyond their narrow uh, self-interest. It's what animates people to achieve great things for the good of the collective. It's why the fascists exert so much effort in shattering bonds and redirecting our desire for community and friendship towards hate, death, and destruction. I know how awkward and naive this must sound, but my ethos, uh, <clears throat> how my ethos is something like straight out of an American pop song, but the banality of it does not make it any less true. Amid the indignity of poverty and exploitation, friendship has proven itself to be our greatest source of strength and comfort. I wish I could have taught you this in time. I wish I had known the depths of your despair. I wish I had seen you one last time at the gala to tell you how much I valued your companionship, how much commitment to the union reminded me of why I became chairman of the Council of People's Commissars. Your words and actions reminded me that I could not just be a leader of ponies. I need to be reminded that of all, to be a leader of all peoples, yearning for freedom amid oppression. What you do to right cannot be undone. I cannot offer you an easy absolution like some dissolute priest. No good friend would. But I will never stop hoping for your rehabilitation for you to be transformed by your struggle and emerge stronger. When you're ready for that journey, I will be there to help you. Until then, I'll carry the memory into my heart. Memory of you, my heart. Goodbye for now, friend. Oh, develop the acoustic hydroelectric station? Yes, please. Oh, can we do it one at a time? No. Next piece begins to improve. Produce more material? Why not? Why not? Because we can only get how much? 120 still? So? Screw it, why not? Finalize economic development. Ooh, that would have been really good. 1% growth. Let's finish economic development section of the crystals mechanic to save in the rest of the undone decisions. Oh. Well, we got time for that, so it's fine. We gotta wait to go to unify these guys in 71, which is good. We got some time. Couple more divisions, nice. Oh, that lag. $7.02 billion in uh, debt. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I apologize for having to basically cheat again, but it is what it is. Not much we can really do. Ooh, admin begins to improve. Spam pontification. Stay in the course. Hmm, decisions go way down, but utilize the bureaucracy. Central Siberia, like all of Russia, was once but a part of the great part of the Soviet Union until its collapse at the end of the Great Patriotic War. Compared to West Russia, which suffered under the German terror bombings in the West Russian War and our own Far East, which naturally fell into ungoverned wasteland or was opportunistically struck by the white emigres, Central Siberia was able to retain a lot of bureaucratic structures from its former union under the Central Siberian Republic and then the many warlords that seceded from it. This would be crucial in making integration into the harmonious union easier, as around structures, a mimic that way of the old union in a lot of ways. <clears throat> Which is a good thing. Crystal business? Yeah. Friends are forever. I think that's all. Uh, Pearl finished.
checking her saddle bags filled with books and papers, and with red hammers and horseshoes stamped over them. Why don't you get her boy? She said to her husband. Of course I... Uh, we need to talk to him. He's not re himself recently, not after realizing that we're going to have to move to Novos Abirsk with the rest of the Supreme Soviet. I'll take care of it, don't worry. Golden started to close the trunk of the car and walk back into the house, and so I saw his son, completely quiet, staring down at something he's levitating with his magic. Rainbow, we approached the young boy and saw what he was holding, a picture of him, along with other foals and human children. Misha, Blue, Yuluka, Victor, the boy little sniffle. I'm, I'm never going to see them again, am I? Star, could hear the sorrow in his voice, and they've been my friends for years. How am I supposed to let them go this easily? Rainbow broke down into tears. Go to start try to closer and spoke. Son, sometimes we have to let things go that we love, but in the process, you can have much greater things. Star levitated the broken frame and continued to keep this picture, place it on a table in her new home, and collect many more pictures like this one. It's a big world out there, and there are many friends to be made. I believe in you. Rainbow rubbed the tears off his face and stared at the picture his father held in the air. With his hoof, he picked it up again and hugged his father. I thank you, father. Standardized gauges. It's extremely important for us to keep the railways that crisscross the Siberian lands as standardized as possible. God alone knows what the Central Siberian warlords with their haphazard, nonsensical plans and incessant and disharmonious squabbles managed to build. So then, obviously, there's no choice for us to move on this matter. Let the authorities in charge of the transport be ordered to see the gauges of the railways in Siberia as to so ensure one standard gauge across the entire Union. East and center now is one. Nearly 12 months ago, as we began to assume responsibility for Central Siberia in the name of the new harmonious Russia, the Central Siberian region was completely... Two completely separate polities, torn apart by prior inco uh, incompetence, backstabbing, treachery, and the brutality of the Germans. On the other hand, on one hand, they're all the one and the same, nearly indistinguishable from another. We have unified them in the name of harmony. Expand pontification. With a whole new land under the aegis of harmony also comes with many new friends. For the first time in a long while, we have whole population centers that are completely human and where no pontification has been underway. It would be grossly unfair to not offer such a thing to all these people, so Comrade Bakharin decided to extend the pontification process to anyone willing in central Siberia. These here territories do have a substantial population, of course, and Bakharin expects many of them to take us up on our offer. We should make sure that we are able to accommodate anyone who wishes to do so by expanding the infrastructure necessary for it. And then making new friends, which is not bad, but we'll probably be staying the course. While the old Central Siberian leaders may be capable bureaucrats, regrettably we most likely aren't able to trust them. We only recently brought this region into the fold, and many aspects of harmonic communism will stand to be quite alien to them. We simply can't take a risk here and let them come to the terms with harmony and the comfort of their homes. For the administration of the Central Siberian territories, we should use some of our own people. <coughs> This may seem like a tricky task, but there are always people ready to spread the spirit of harmony. Perhaps some of the newer members in the party, ready to make a name for themselves, it always works to give the future chance. Informed consent. So what you're saying is that that I go in there, then poof, I'm, I'm a pony? Uh, Sergei Ivana felt as a small begin to strain. Uh, just answer that question, comrade. He sighed. He hadn't been one of the first to accept Bakharin's offer. He had been initially skeptical, gave up one's humanity to become a living, breathing pastel horse. But as more of his friends took the offer, he saw how happy they'd become with their new forms, and he decided to join them. So when Bakharin pulled a call out for volunteers to bring his offer into the newly integrated regions of central Siberia, Sergei knew that he needed to join. Legitimate in front of him stunk, or stunk of cheap beer. He'd been pestering Sergei over the, for the better part of the past half hour, asking about five or six questions on repeat. Seemingly delighted with the answer each time, but as the man's elation grew, Sergei's patience continued to shrink. The process is simple, explained again. You go in, touch a crystal, and you become the kind of pony that best matches your personality. The man nodded, I want to do it. What? I, I want, the man hiccuped. Uh, taking a swig from a flask before continuing, I want to be a pony. Carmen, you can't go back there like this. Bakarin's offer is open to everybody, but it's too important to make while you're too drunk to remember. Uh, Sergei hopped around the corner, nudging the man out of the door. Come back when you're sober, then we'll talk. Or just do it anyways. Siberia made pink. Now that administration has settled on ponification offer to anyone who wants it, it seems that the people of Central Siberia are responding very well to harmony. A new mix of ponies and humans are experiencing the magic of friendship, able to put the woes of the anarchy behind and come together as friends. It's good for us, no doubt. It's a good thing for the ideals to spread positively among the people, but it's good for everyone in the end. The more people there are united in friendship, the greater the harmony is. Our average has been fruitful, and we can take all comfort in that. Nice. How are we doing with the economy? Uh, we don't have a lot of war support, which really sucks. About 37% is not bad. But staying, of course. The course. An infant ideology. Well, at least that gets removed eventually. What is this? Dedicated mining crystals? Ooh, theoretic mines for projects. Ooh, economic base improves. Oh, well, probably won't do that one. <coughs> An absolute secrecy, huh? The brightest mines. Come on. Come on. Of which we possess, no matter their ethnicity or species, must be called to arms for a different kind of battle. No, it does not require arms nor the wielding of offensive magic. Far from it. In fact, this is the war of the mind in the hands. Let all loyal scientists, human opponent, be recruited and sworn to secrecy as to see this project through to its final end and help us and further, further expand harmony across the world. Happy 1970, everybody.
21 pony capable tanks. So that's not very much. We could do all this stuff. 400 some, but let's wait. Siberia made pankarinos. Surprise mines. Dedicated mining crystals. Absolute secrecy. Um, Costs quite a bit more. Look pretty good to do, though. Facilities there. What else we have? Superior material. Power of the sun. Palmer hooves. Ooh. Legacy of 1924. The year 1924 was an important turning point for the history of Russia and the Soviet Union. One that Kamen Bakar and many others remember all too well. Only 21 days in, the great revolutionary Vladimir Lenin passed away after a period of ill health and passed leadership to Bakara. Bakharin championed Lenin's proposal of the new economic policy and put it into practice through many different methods, the most prominent of which was a famed Central Siberian plan, the legacy of which was very important to the warlords that once called places like Barnall and Tom's Comb. Now, however, these lands are part of our harmonious union. And the reins rest in our hands once more. We'll carry on the unfinished business started all those years ago in the tribute to, to the spirit of Lenin. Oh. Oh. I don't think I've seen this before. There goes Papa Borman. Oh, don't tell him it's going to end a nuclear war. Oh, please don't tell him it's going to end. That's like the exact wrong thing we should have right now. Yuri Gagarin. Huh. No, oh, maybe not. Pavel? Why not? We'll take Pavel. Well, being a Burgundy, that's good to see. <clears throat> oh. Well. All right then. Begin theoretical development. Yes. Sewing harmony, more centralized. The fruits of the Siberian plan. Oh. As much as I want to do that one. Oh, great GDP growth is up by 0.5 percent. As much as I want more growth. If you don't worry about that, please go right ahead. Fruits of the Siberian plan. Some doubt the efficacy of the Central Siberian plan, but this is only because of its potential was never fully realized in the days of the Union. The final outcome of the project was decided heavily by the fascist right, trying to crush into the dirt, and his opinions are not a proper assessment of what happened. We'll put the old apparatus and methods to work once more, aided by the many innovations produced by the warlords during the anarchy, and finally feel the true fruits of the Central Siberian Plan. What are the Central Siberian Plan? Eh. Ah, screw it. We'll do this one. Sewing Army. One can argue about the theory of the Siberian plan all day, but it's impossible to argue how the execution was plainly disastrous. Unlike your own Far Eastern Siberian plan, the implementation was rife with the contradictory ideas. An experiment was a failure, and Russia and the world, us included, changed too much to even salvage any value it could have. A clear and even slate will allow us to reform top to bottom what a harmonic Russia is and what a harmonic Russian world can be. And why would we waste this opportunity? A uh, winter wrap up is never a bad thing. That's that one, too. And up here, we're going to get slightly more growth. Nice. There you go. <clears throat> there you go as well. And then, newer economic policy. Regardless of our thoughts on the, on the NAP, the fact is we aren't the Soviet Union anymore. We're something completely, utterly new and human, and pony history, and our econ economy should reflect as such. Our history and world is a tribute of bloody thesis on what worked and what didn't work in Russia and abroad, and would be ignorant to pretend the like half of the 20th century will work with its earlier half's mindset with one with numerous sapient species even. Theory is a hassle, but economics is a thankless work anyways. We'll change to the system of Kozrashoye. Oh boy. Oh boy. Where are we at for dab? 33.4%. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. We'll try to be legit here, but we'll see what happens. The element of generosity. Rapidly improve. Oh yeah. It might not be the first word that some... Someone thinks of, but communism is about generosity. Some of the core elements of the communist theory involve the forced confiscation of wealth, except, of course, the tenets of harmony that this allows us from forcefully confiscating wealth from the upper classes and distribution amongst the no leading, needing lower classes. And if generosity is added about sharing what you have with others, then are the two not one and the same? 
The link between harmony and communism is predetermined before we even make it. And Chapman, generosity only strengthens it. Wait, wait, wait. Could it be an element of harmony manifesting on itself on Earth? Right here? Dr. Emil A., hey? Wait, what? Emil. Oh, wait. Right. Wonder about that, please go ahead. And there you go. Get a lot of political power now. Because eventually we want these divisions. And make sure we get enough artillery. And it's logistics. <clears throat> ah, Zimbabwe. Harmony is friendship, huh? Uh, entry four, there you go. About that, please go right ahead. Amusing in, uh, inventions. The Camarabo amusement plant was, in Rurik's day, in an armament factory. By the time that Harmonious Union liberated Central Siberia had been left to decay, partially destroyed by warlord battles, it took a dedicated, talented net man to turn into something truly special. Today, Chair Pony Bakaran was doing a routine tour of this newest factory. How strange it seemed. Ponies and humans stood together, shoulder to shoulder, working out on guns or foods, but on cuddly children's toys. Buttons and clothes flew across a conveyor belt to be stitched on by workers. At the end of the line, colorful stuffed ponies piled into crates, ready to be shipped across the Harmonious Union. Bakaran tried to grab one of the plushies. Looking back at him was his own spitting image, so with the cotton blue eyes. They even matched the chair ponies' hat and beard. Stitching to the horn was glowing a lot, so the children could pretend that the plush had alicorn magic. What wondrous little innovations! Ah. Uh, uh, and Bokaran thought to himself, there was even everything that NEP was designed for. Plush toys would never come for the unimaginative minds of party bureaucrats, no matter their devotion to harmony. Such industrial innovations could only come from the har workers themselves, ready to test their ideas in the harmonious market of socialism. He squeezed a toy from a voice box hidden in the frame of the pony. A deep voice began to speak, I am Chair Pony Bokaran, friendship is magic. It does sound a little bit like me, but dedicated crystal mines? In Russia, there have been emerging, emerged several crystal mines. However, at the moment, they seem overly preoccupied with things that are not what we need to focus on. Various magical doodads that are all well and good for peacetime or conventional military uses, but completely useless otherwise. Can't be allowed to continue. Let a decree be issued ordering all mines to stop delivering crystals to do other stuff and have them instead deliver all products, produce crystals to Project Phoenix. Hey, I don't like this whole exercise. What is this for sales tax? I guess we didn't have a lot of sales earlier. Poverty should be rapidly improving. Not bad, the gift of giving. When the strange changes accompanied Bakarin's new Russian came, Alexis took no notice. Life went on in his village as normal, or as usual, cold, harsh, but normal. No one ever thought they had enough, so the only way they could survive was through the goodwill and generosity of their fellow villagers, and Alexei, as the one with the most, usually tended to be the one who gave the most. Nothing about this seemed odd to him, it was just how he lived life, and being given, given being as natural as breathing. It was definitely not natural, however. When, while trying to lend his neighbor's son what little sugar he had left, he found a pantry filled to the brim with a neatly stacked stacks of high-quality export Cuban sugar, which of course meant that all of his other stocks of food had vanished into this aether. Now that this mattered, because Alexei found that there now seemed to be no limit to his generosity, especially not the silly limits of things like the laws of physics or reality, anything he wished to give, he found he could. Very briefly, the temptation to make mounds of gold or precious stones came and went. It happened in a dream, a turquoise-hued vision of the power he had to receive, apparently because of his status as generosity incarnate. At the end of the day, however, Alexei realized it made him happier simply to give the candles to the children, help his neighbors fix their plows and tractors, and sometimes make a nice pot of high-quality tea for the lady across the street who had lost her husband in the war. A generous heart remains generous, and absolute secrecy. How precisely will the phoenix rise from its ashes if its foes are able to intrude upon it before it is even born? We must keep this project totally secret as much as humanly or ponily as possible. We have no choice. No word can get out, lest the German enemies of harmony attack us. At the NKGD, we ordered into action all around our site. They shall be tasked with keeping this on the hush de hushed. It's going to cost us quite a bit more, but you know what? Sometimes we got to do crazy things. Crazy, crazy things. What are you building still? More roads? It doesn't really help us that much, but whatever. Yeah, they really, when they had no setback, they really just signifies road building. My god, all that lag. Just kind of waiting for the thing to load. My apologies. Oh, 
Oh, that's good. We got plenty of energy, though. Out of electricity. So we're dead 6.6 million. Earmark mines for the project, sure. Finalize economic development. <clears throat> economic development of the crystal section. Nice. 7% growth almost, not enough. We spend a lot on civilian stuff, not even military stuff anymore, which is fine, but whatever. Facilities here, sure. How precisely will the Phoenix rise from its ashes if foes are able to intrude upon it before it is even born? The NKGD were ordered into action all around the sites. Their task is to keep this all in the hush hush, but there were report difficulties with doing so. We should help reduce said difficulties if we move to more remote locations. Therefore, larger facilities must be constructed throughout Siberia, so as to allow us to work in freedom and with greater secrecy. Let it be done! Let it be done! Can't even do any of this stuff. Oh, if you want to be a better industrial expertise, oh, please go, go, go to bed. Or go right ahead. Either one. Innovative industry? Nice. Awesome. Growth. Only 7.366%. Ah, not enough. Debt servicing. Well, hopefully it's going down still, but you never know. Better engineers? Good. Better recon? Good. Go there too. Where are we at for this? Nice. We get like 2.77 every single day, which is pretty awesome. A superior material. Uranium is well and good for the purposes of other non harmonic powers. It was enough to make a fool of the Americans and British. It suffice to bend East Asia to the Japanese well and Europe to the German dictat. But process is nowhere near enough. With the crystals of magic we have access to, we are empowering to develop a fission material unheard of in history. Those will enable us to build a magic nuclear bomb with a peer. We're in nineteen seventy, which is great. Supply issues? Oh yeah, we might have some. Well, maybe not. Maybe we don't. These guys are still trying to unite. Comey's still alive. How? How? <coughs> oh we have the Republic of China here too, look at that. But they did modernize, so. What is Psycho Gonga? It's a fat Germany. Huh. What is this? Democratic Socialists? Wait, Italy can go Democratic Socialist? Whoa. Oh, the world's gonna fall apart very soon. Did they fix all this? Did they fix Italy? Huh. Social Democratic Reason, huh. Track more crystal prisons? That's fine. Wow, this is really sad. Facilities in Sabaria. Alright. A superior material. Followed up with Harmonious Friendship. Our harmonious union is a beacon of harmony and friendship shining from the new Russia that is slowly reconstituting itself after decades of hardship. As we now stand with the Far East and Central Siberia united in harmony, we're truly stronger than ever. It has taken so much work from the birth of the harmonic communism in the far northern ways of Siberia and the spread of harmony throughout the whole west of the Far East, to the reconciliation of the humans and poems that make up our land and the spread of harmony to Central Siberia to now. From the pain of years of suffering, we now have channeled a magic greater than any force on this earth, and that one is of friendship. Which is a great thing. Only 8% growth, only 8%? Come on, man, we can do better than that. Oh, and now the oil crisis is going to go kaboom. Oh, there goes Charles de Call. So much for France. The world is falling apart, as it probably should. Italian Empire? 
Who's in the UK? Macmillan. Oh, that's not Macmillan. That's definitely not male. <clears throat> oh, we're all search. I didn't realize this. Oh, I didn't see that part before. Oh, okay. Samara one. Wow, they united literally in 1970. Holy bad words. Construct f secret facilities, yeah. The power of the sun. We've researched or reached the final stretch of our labors. The facilities have been built in Siberia where uranium is fused with crystal and magic to build a bomb without pure and human or perhaps even point in history. The work has been successfully conducted in absolute secrecy, leveraging the brightest minds and the dedicated crystal minds of the harmonious union. Therefore, it's safe to say everything is ready in the place, save for the assembling the weapon itself. The time has come. Nice. <laughs> very, very nice. Ten days left. 6.126. Still too high. Even after uniting. Even though we might have used cheats. It's still poor. How How is it still poor? I don't understand. Obviously, we don't have a GDP like Germany or the USA or whatever. But still, my goodness. Led by... Oh, Barry Goldwater. And led by Francisco Franco. What else do we have here? Some radar stations sound pretty nice this time of year. No, uh, it's not ready for test. Friendship is magic? Sure, why not? We must face certain realities, however, however much we would like to avoid it, it would appear a conflict with those in West Russia over the fate of the nation is inevitable. It's a painful thing to be harmed by and bring harm to our fellow Russians, whatever the makeup of our nation. In dark times such as these, it's more important than ever that the core principles of harmony remain resolute in the hearts of our people. It was magic that brought us change in so many new ways, showing us a new way of life and the abilities of beyond comprehension. It was friendship that got us through some of our darkest times, bringing us together in love and companionship. We owe harmony a great deal, and if we carry with it uh, with us always, then we can never fail. Human or pony, we are united. We are all Buckhorn's little ponies. So let us stand strong. Let the humans pick up their rivals. Let the ponies get ready to trot. The euros will weigh, and somewhere there are new friends to be made. Buckhorn's little ponies, BLP? BLP. We're all BLPs here. Buckhorn's little ponies. You, me, and that other weird guy in the corner. Three days left, that's not bad. Yeah, for unification war, might as well. Grand showdown, fortified fallback lines, mobile the air force, no production units. Eh, that's not really worth doing. <clears throat> this is war sport. Get more political power, well, it'd be kind of a waste then. Power of the sun and friendship is magic. And we'll see what this one event reads like too. Because eventually we'll convert our divisions and probably start ballooning up our debt. Oh, uh, little Morgan. That's the more percent question. What is this? System of Kozrashoyet. As often translated in English as cost accounting. The apparent reference to market capitalism is by no means a mistake. Bringing together the security of a planned economy and the unique motivations of a capitalist economy, the Krush Shoy system encourages liberalization of the Soviet economy with the express aim of building up productive forces in order to bring about socialism. As most basic, it is the simple introduction of the concept of profit to a centrally planned economy, though the term is yet more much more expansive connotation of free market liberalization due to Genrich Kikura's use of the term. I couldn't tell you what I just read. But it was about numbers. Lots of numbers. Yeah, we can't quite make these guys like 40 combo with. Well, there goes Kurdistan. Bye, Kurdistan. You got defeated by the Iraqis again. <clears throat> these guys ain't too bad. But I want to make these guys even thicker. Like 41 combo with, maybe? Ooh. It's finally got plenty of stuff there. 
But other than that, we're just kind of hanging out, and we'll be ready soon. It's Siberian sunset. Bakar and gazed over the city of Sibiris, bathed in the fading sunlight beneath an orange sky. As the sun descended ever closer towards the horizon, Bakaran's mind drifted away from the few before him. His mind drifted instead towards those who had been lost all the way, along the way. Bakaran thought of Lenin, lost his sickness all those years ago, and of Rykov, tragically killed by an extremist. Thinking about Rykov's death still stung Bakaran, the wounds evidently too fresh to be prodded at. As the sky shifted from orange <clears throat> to pink and then to deep purple, Bakaran also thought of all the Bolsheviks lost and the millions who suffered in the past few decades. Ever since the Great Patriotic War, Russia has only known suffering and strife. When the sun finally submerged beneath the horizon, the city of Novos Abyss was bathed in the calm darkness of light, of night. Bakaran resolved to never again let the people suffer the despair that all the Russians have felt. Bakaran felt himself knew that despair all too well, and the despair that set in ever since the fall of the Union. Bokharin tried to, to turn away or turn away from the balcony, ready to do what was necessary. Let's ignite the spark of hope, rather than the fan the flames of despair, as we will do adding crystals, final weapons assembly maybe, and maybe prepare for the final test. Well everyone, we're at war. We'll try our best. We'll see what we can do. Especially against Omsk. Hopefully we can do well. This time we're actually using being fair. We'll also get some war taxes. Doesn't hurt us that much, but we didn't get anything out of that. That kind of sucks, but whatever. See what we can do with our divisions. There's a lot of enemies we're trying to kill. That's a group of the fifth. Oh, I think they died too. Nice. Um, no guarantees that we'll be super great, but at the same time, hopefully we do all right. Um, who's down here? Is it Zatalist? What the heck is this? If you have Giddy Savitz, then. Cool, they have unique folks, but they do not. But now, we can harmonify, harmonify Omsk and prepare for the final test, putting in maternity programs, all sorts of good stuff, so. Overall, not bad. Good. Very good. Uh, additionally, we did create an intelligence agency, and you know what? We'll probably want to do is Samara. Samara's going to be a big old pain in the donkey donkey donkeys. So. Oh, that hurts us even more. Well, crap. Spent quite a bit on the military, though. I did convert almost all these divisions to infantry, so. That shouldn't be too bad, right? Well, only when you lose, it's going to be really bad. They have a lot of militia. Well, they got some. Not a lot, but some. We lost 8,000. They've lost 17,000. Overall, not bad. Not bad, not bad. A little more fuel because you can, even though we don't really need it yet for now. But yeah, we pretty much only have infantry here. Oh, we can't pierce them, huh? Yeah, we should probably get some anti tank. That probably ought to be a good thing to do. What if we throw an anti tank on these guys? Well, we have enough. Quite a bit, yes. Good. Do we not have any of these divisions? Wait, what? Oh, we don't have the Pegasus divisions. My bad. There you go, that's better. No wonder we're losing so many guys. Overwhelming attack? Sure, why not? That makes a lot of sense why we weren't doing so well. There you go. No wonder we're losing so many. much manpower? I guess it is uh, Batov. So he's probably not super weak. Then again, he's out of manpower, so... There is that. Yeah, tire him out so they can't really do anything against us. If you want to buy better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Very nice. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yes. Factory complex is awesome. Should be getting quite a bit of army XP as well by doing this. No, you're going to force the attack. If you die, it's all your fault, so. Well, there's a lot of manpower, but I don't care. you got to kill them off. It's literally your job. Chelyabinsk, go in. Oh, you're already in. Nice. Why are they not capitulated yet? Oh, I get to go all the way to Sverdlos. That sucks. Yeah, kill them off. Just disintegrate them if you can. Look, manpower, how's equipment looking? We're looking pretty decent. Yeah. We even have a couple of uh, main battle tanks and stuff like that, but... Dr. Hark, huh?
Oh my god, stop with these things. Seriously, stop sp I don't understand why they spawn the way they do. It's probably because we're not really paying I'm not really paying attention to these. But still, like, bro. Like I wanna focus more on uh the war at hand. I can't I'll be honest, I don't even know which ones were open. I I don't care anymore. Like I wanna focus on the war. You're not gonna lose here. <clears throat> it's fair to lose because of the pain in the butt to kill off though. It really is. Where are we at with this? Um, give these more planes. Artillery, we got enough. How? Inclusion took his canes. And this one, the Legion does a gaming move. Oh, crap. Our land doctor still sucks, though. It's not good at all. Yeah. You know what? Fine, we'll make it bigger. Bigger and thicker. How are you able to hold us off? I don't understand this. Just want to focus on the goddamn war. Come on. I know this is important and all, but still, like, bro. Uh, thank God. Jesus Christ, this is dumb. <clears throat> We're suffering from supply losses, but they don't. Yeah, that's fair. Go in, my God. Quit, just stop losing, my God. Just stop losing. Our divisions are just so weak compared to everyone else's. This whole supply situation, no step back, really screwed everything up. Facebook promoted. Go. And we need to get at least a front line. Some front lines first, I guess, there too. Should be okay doing that though. Well, they definitely are attacking us. Samada, lots of manpower, not a lot of production, There's not a lot of divisions either. That's some equipment. What are we missing now? Anti air. Crap. And artillery? Are you kidding me? That's so stupid. You know what? Screw these tanks. I wanted to use them, but the tanks just cost way, 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 way too much. You can't make any tanks in, this, in, in, in TNO anymore, really, unless you're a giant, like, um, major power. Which makes sense, I guess, to not be able to make anything, but still. Go on, attack us. I hate this. I'd love to see how much money these guys actually have, because it's ridiculous. Uh, facilities were built in Siberia. <clears throat> we're in a uranium. It was fused with crystal magic to build a bomb without pure and human, or perhaps even pony history. I think I read this one. 
Yeah. And the work was successfully conducted in absolute secrecy, leveraging the brightest minds and the dedicated crystal minds of the Harmonious Union. The bomb was assembled. Now, now, we put it off. The power to secure harmony for all eternity against its enemies of all forms and species, it's ours, in the hands, palm of our hooves and hands. It remain forever with us. Come on, keep attacking us. So these guys are out of manpower. These guys have a lot, quite a bit of manpower left. Come on, man. Yeah, I don't know how Quest Reward does it with the devs. Because they do really well. I'm making sure the game runs smoothly, but... Yeah. Oh my god, stop it with these. Please stop it with these. I don't want to do these anymore. I don't even read these because there's just way too many of them. Wait, why is it actually two? Palm or hooves? Ultimaya. Ultima Ratio. I'll be honest, I can't even remember what, which which ones are which. So I apologize for all this stuff, but it just, this is an annoying. It's really annoying. I know I should be reading this stuff, but like... If you wanted a side story, add something else. I don't know, maybe don't add anything else. Like... Come on. And I know it's a good attempt for the, the TNO devs to like, do like their own voice acting, which is great. I do like that a lot, but... Come on. I want to focus on the war more right now. Which obviously he's not doing very much, but still. Ultimate ratio. 20 seconds to the test. Please check your eye protection, comrades. The scientists in the bunker scurried around in front of Bakaran and the rest of the Pelotia Bureau, conducting the final checks. Today was the day. Bakaran was no fan of the ultimate killing weapon. It was a vicious crime against nature that went against almost everything Harmony stood for. But if he was going to contend with the modern world and the other superpowers, this was a necessary evil to take part in. And today was the first day of the test. Five. Murmuring. The murmuring came to a stop. Four. Three. Bokaran's hooves were rung together. Two. One. <clears throat> the light was intense. Even with the eye protection. Bokaran had no choice but to squint as it receded, leaving in its wake the vicious clouds of atomic fire. The shockwaves rattled against the building as the cloud expanded, the top flattening out and folding into it itself, creating uh, the fabled mushroom shape. As the spectacle settled, the murmuring resumed. The scientists were pleased, and if nothing else, Bokaran and the Pelotia Bureau were glad to see it gone well instead of disastrously. Perhaps there was something in the back of Bokaran's head wanted it to fail for them to not harness the... And the second blast came. Bakarn didn't notice the cloud collapsing in upon itself until the sound started raving. Startled raving brought attention to it, and everyone in the room could only watch it as it compacted into a smaller and smaller shape in the distance before it rebounded. It was no motion cloud any longer, but a pulsing sphere of destructive purple energy that made the previous blast look like a pebble. Pure destruction, the silence was deafening. All Bakarn could see here was a little rumbling that the blast had left behind. What had happened? It wasn't supposed to be this powerful, was it the crystals that had the magic increase the yield? The questions bounced around in his head, but the words were barely able to escape his mouth. What have we done? Whoa. Seismologists in Alaska detected a great abnorm abnormality in the far east of the Russian anarchy. Further investigations have revealed that the so-called Harmonious Union has successfully developed a nuclear bomb, with an explosion far greater than anything that the three superpowers can muster. So-called crystal magic has been used to enhance the power of the bomb to an extent hitherto unheard of. The Harmonious government's pledge in a community never to use its weapon against a foe, but the world is, un un is unified for the first time in abject fear and terror of the state that has emerged from the Russian anarchy. Oh no. Oh boy. Oh no and oh boy. I hate these guys so much. Just die. It's not fun to fight against enemies that are just so extremely entrenched and there's nothing you can do about it. And we should be bombing the living crap out of them too. So, this does not make any, like, a sense. You're not going anywhere, you piece of doo doo. If anything, you're going to die for your sins. Oh, you stay there too. Now you guys are going to die for your sins as well. No. No. 
Kill every last man you see. I don't care what happens to them. Kill every single last man. You want to do all this damage? You really want to do all this damage? You can't afford the cost that this damage is raving upon your land, or ravaging upon your lands. You can't even comprehend how much damage that we're doing. Joey Benz would be good for the supply point too. Apologies for taking so long, but my god, I hate the combat in TNO now. Used to be so good before No Step Back came out. Or at least it's a lot more fun. Hmm. A lot more fun. Where are you going, son? Good. Cut him off. Kill him off. It's the only way they learn. How are they still alive? I don't care if these guys spread out. What I care about taking out each and every single enemy first. Good. Good, kill them all off. Because I'd love to do general attack, but I don't think we can really afford it yet. I definitely won't take the towel, though, with Cam. Cardigan, yes. Don't let him move. And the goal is that any damage that we do, oh, then I cannot replace. Take the towels, you might be able to kill them all off and to capitulate them. If we can do that, we'll just for just go ahead. Go. Yes. yes. No, you should be able to do better than this right now. In all honesty, you should do way better than this. Picture them so it makes it easier for us. That should be enough, right? We should not need arms or orsk, I should guess I should say. At this point, they've lost a lot. And they should be already be dead, in all honesty. I don't know why it took that long. It doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. I have these. 60,000 versus 9,000. Not bad. Keep going on in. I think that at this point there's nothing they can do about us. Which is a very, 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 very quite good thing. How many divisions they got? We have 49. They have, well, a total of 39 max. Not bad. Vorkuta, thank you. Economy wise, we're doing actually worse for the deficit now. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, whatever. What is what is uh Samara like? Octan? They got plenty more manpower now. Plenty oh they've lost them earlier, but enough production units, twenty four divisions, quite a bit of anti tank. Nice. Good stuff. Help them out. Give them that extra little push that they really need. Because they're about to run out of manpower. Good. 
and die. Totally didn't forget about artillery. Totally did it. Any upgrades? No, it's not even close. I mean, maybe a little bit of a ranger, but that's pretty much it. Blow them literally to smithereens. There you go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And immediately become cores. That's very nice. See anything else? No, we're looking good. Pretty much everything else. <coughs> so, Samara's right there. Look at that. Nice. Samara would be nice this time of year, I'd say. I reckon. I love seeing the, the depletion of enemy strength. We lost 44,000, we killed 154,000, that's not enough. More. More must perish. Seventy-nine thousand, they're out of production units. Good, good, good. How do we have a year really plus getting worse and worse every year? That literally makes no sense to me. 0.18. How does it get worse? We're uh, taking more land. It's because they do core things, maybe? I have no idea. How? It's not debt servicing and it's not military spending. It's not civilian spending, could it be? Oh, nuclear stuff maybe? But it's still zero. Oh, both channels are window, that's pretty unfortunate. Right, so let's look at minus point three, it's actually really flipping good, but still. Twenty five thousand. Nice, keep going, keep going. Gleb. Glebby boy. Glebidia. Sixty-two production units now, and tons of uh, energy. Nice. More RT effect, please. I don't care if it's ahead of time. I want it. Gleb Yakunin, thank you very much. Hey, more organization recovery rate, nice. Oh, we're done with the air doctrine already. That's actually quite fast. 19 divisions left. Point two five. Never enough growth. And do we have them? We should. Very nice. Reunification of Russia. Union of Harmonious Socialist Republics. Another user slot. Very cool. No names from old times. Sixty of Carl was more run down than Bukhar and remembered. It certainly had imagined it'd be some glowing paradise after all. It had been bombed for decades and fought over for just as long by the bullet cracked concrete and occasionally shattered windows of the old apartments. <clears throat> 
uh, which still def defiantly stood, didn't add much to its beauty. Sictive Car was a city which, thanks to the efforts of the Harmonious Union, uh, could f finally turn to a brighter future. A city which he helped build in its model, modern form, after all. In a way, it was like a father seeing his child all grown up. It was just beginning to consider that line of thought when he had heard the quiet boots of cooking against the ba pavement. I turned to his head, told him who was coming up behind him, Bloiker, holding a letter in his right hand. The smile on his face was evident. Good evening, Bloiker, Bokharan opened. Someone's in a good mood, is it the view? Partly calmer, Bokharan returned, taking a position beside him. His eyes swept over the city before turning back to his chair pony, but I'm mainly here to give you this. He held the letter out to the Bokharan, who took it with a hoof. He delicately tore it open and began to read the paper with him. You see, comrade, as we begin moving west, I started hearing stories of your daughter becoming a political figure. So if you can believe it. I'm sure you still heard the same. I ordered it to be looked into. We followed the trust as far as it would lead us, and we found that not only were the rumors true, but that she's somewhere, he pointed out to the damaged city beyond here. But Karin wasn't listening. His eyes were glued to the paper, reading it at a rapid pace. With a stifled, stifled gasp, he held his, his head shut up and eyes widened. Svetlana? Mama Svetlana? Or I guess this guy's daughter Svetlana? No such thing. She must have passed away years ago. Is it really her? Family reunion. Nikolai Bokharin had done many things in his life. He had crumpled paper under a nation's darkest hour, fleeing hopelessly into the Siberian tundra. He had subsisted meagerly in the waste, hiding from <clears throat> his shame until he had been blessed by the discovery of that fateful crystal. His struggle had, to, had led to great rewards with magical power, the people's love and honor. Uh, despite that, knocking on the door was the most terrifying thing he'd committed to in his life. The wraps of his hoof on wood rang out like gunshots, and he rarely retreated a few paces. He, her methods in hiding had taken days of the finest men and ponies in the NKGD to crack. He knew how it felt to retreat so thoroughly. Would she accept them and welcome him inside? Would she even recognize him? Quietly, the door cracked open a fraction of an inch. She could see a brown eye peek out, then widened in the, to the size of saucers. With a creak, the door was pulled open the rest of the way, revealing father? Svetlana, you really are a horse. She put her hands over her mouth, eyes flicking up and down Nikolai's form. An alicorn, my sweet. He tried to smile. Are you well? Yes, I am. Would you like to? Memories flooded him as she stumbled over her sentence. He had last seen her out of the back of a truck 30 years ago. She'd only been 17. Now she was older. Much, much older. But he recognized that stance. Her voice, her eyes. It was his vet, Lana. Would you like to come in? I would like that. I would like that very much. Oh, you're just a bus. Growth went down a little bit, but, you know, it's still not bad. Apologies, but we're probably not going to be uh, fighting the Germans in this campaign. But his coffee cup clinked against the sauce as he put it down. This is fantastic, he murmured quietly. How, much, how did you get such a fine drink? It's from before the war, so Valana replied, sipping a coffee as if to emphasize. I only make someone's a special occasion. And this qualifies, I presume, Bakarin replied, a light smile crossing his face. His daughter responded with a grin of her own. Tell me more about Comey, he inquired. You said you met Mikhail Andreevich? Oh, yes, I did. And comrade uh, Andrei Alexandrovich, and there was Svetlana Stalina. Bokharin frowned on the instant at that name. She was not as barbaric as her father, but she was driven, and Comey was so chaotic, father, never a dull moment. Bokharin said, I let his saucer to the side. Before I say any more, I just want to let you know how proud I am, Svetlana. You made yourself into somebody important, somebody courageous, leader, warrior, comrade. It's a privilege to call you my daughter. Svetlana beam, straightening in her seat. I always knew you were out there, you know, and I, uh... See here now the flesh and she showed off. Bakarn said nothing. Instead, he reached out into the pocket of his jacket, pulling out a crystal and sitting on the table. It glowed an electric purple in the afterlight noon or light, drawing Svetlana in. When she looked back up, her eyes were mixed with fear, hope, excitement, and worry. The old man took a deep breath before he continued. You know what this means? Yes, I would like it would be a big change. You will lose your current form, but you will gain friendship, magic, harmony, whatever you can imagine. The choice is yours, Svetlana. He closed his eyes and let out one more chuckle, but no matter what it I would just want to let you know how proud I am of you, my little pony. Ha <laughs> my little pony. Would you join me? On behalf of Project Ferris team, thank you so much for playing Tino's 2022 April Fool's Path. Play Questions War side of a crossover project. Stay tuned for more upcoming proper patches. And remember, friendship is magic. What is this stuff for Equestrian War for uh, the Tino stuff? A harmonious Russia. An outcome that would lead to one being institutionalized if they had predicted it merely a ticket to go. Nikolai Bukharin. <clears throat> or Bukharin's harmonious union has reunified Russia. International. Observers are shocked. Although most are really quickly learning to adopt this new reality, or accept it. Despite their differences, the relations between humans and ponies are as peaceful as ever thanks to their beliefs of a new radically idealistic ideology of harmonic communism. As the world watches in equal measure Bill Wilderman and frustrate fascination, words begin spreading that the harmonious union prepares to march west and confront the Germans once and for all. And after two decades of humiliation and pain, one can only hope that this new age of harmony and friendship will last. You get used to it.
And that's it. So, you know, once again, I do apologize for being so rage early in my early episodes, but sometimes, even this episode too, I'm just so frustrated with some of the choices that, that were made in TNO that makes it really just, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes just really, really, really flipping on fun. I just want to have fun and enjoy my time. Can't always do it, but, you know, I, I did enjoy this campaign. I'll be honest. I did enjoy this campaign quite a bit. Um, Battle Royale. Place free milk taps in every corner in Uruguay. Um, generic decisions. Harmony. Stuff like that. So, yeah, I do apologize once again. I would have not liked to rage, but, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to. Especially in frustration. But, hey, if you enjoyed it, because I enjoyed this. I love the Equestria War devs. They do so well, and the writing's really good. I just don't like the combat sometimes. Um, if you enjoyed the video, regardless, leave a simple, simple harmonic communist like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description as well. Let me know what you th your thoughts are on this campaign, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.